Mr. Manu sir, principal madam is there to start it now? Yes sir, wait a moment, I am starting YouTube live. Stream. Hello. Yes. Hello and very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, am I audible? Hello. Am I audible, sir? Yes, yes. Hello and very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. A very, very warm welcome to this absolutely wonderful day that brings together so many special people like you. I am Dr. Kumar Mamane and today I have the pleasure of being your host of this day on which we, are, we will be uh, conducting an online workshop uh, for the, on, the, uh, on the topic of nanotechnology. Uh, hearty welcome to our distinguished guest, Dr. Rupesh Devan, sir. Associate Professor from uh, IIT Indore. Uh, I, I welcome you, sir, to our Sangameshwar Education Society family on this beautiful morning. I would also like to welcome the uh, president of this today's function, uh, our principal, uh, Dr. S. V. Rajmane, madam, vice principal, Dr. S. V. Gote, sir, convener of this workshop, Dr. Uh, Mandale, sir, and all the uh, faculty members present and uh, dear participant students, I would also like to welcome all of you. Once again, uh, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar on nanotechnology. So may I now uh, request or I would like to invite uh, uh, Mrs. Dr. S. V. Rajman and Madam, our principal, to officially welcome all the dignitaries and address everyone gathered. Good morning, everybody. I welcome today's resource person, Dr. Rupesh Divan, for today's one day workshop on nanotechnology, blessing or a curse for the development. I also welcome Dr. Gote, sir, vice principal, Dr. Mande, HOD, uh, Department of Chemistry, Dr. Mamani, and all teachers and students. All we know, today's world is a technological world. Our college got autonomous status and we have implemented autonomy from this year. For this, it's our responsibility to frame syllabus accordingly. Aiming today's world, we organize many guest lectures so that our students get by their knowledge. Today, we are hearing about nanotechnology. It's nanotechnology manje ati sukshma tat tantradhyan. Nanotechnology refers broadly to a field of applied science and technology that controls matter on the atomic, atomic molecular level in scales smaller than one micrometer and the fabrication of devices within this size range. Nanotechnology improves existing industrial process, materials, and applications by scaling them down to the nanoscale in order to ultimately fully exploit the unique quantum and surface phenomenon that matter exhibits at the nanoscale. Students, try to grab the idea of nanotechnology so that in future, many of you will use the technique in research and industry. I wish, I wish the workshop will be the best. Thank you. Thank you, madam, for your inspiring and loving words. Now I would like to invite Dr. Mandale, sir, for introductory speech. Hello everyone. Today's chief guest of this function, Dr. Rupi Devan, Department of Materials Engineering and Materials Science from IIT Indore. Respected principal madam, Dr. Rajmani, 
respected vice principal dr shri gote sir all heads of the departments all colleagues and my dear students a warm good afternoon to all of you i dr mandle young welcome everyone of you to this webinar of nanotechnology and might want to wider a note of much appreciate i believe that by participating in this webinar we are in the right place and the right time together let us accelerate the exchange of ideas and scaling off of good practices we all understand the importance of science technology and innovation in our day to day life and the ways in which they are transforming the world nanotechnology can enable cutting edge technologies that provide potentially transformation capabilities by harnessing the size dependence of physical optical electrical and chemical phenomena that occur at tiny length scales the result can be new materials processes devices and systems that provide unprecedented advances in technologies to provide protection and other capabilities to the war fighter and the war fighters platform i would like to say for nanotechnology it is the understanding and control of matter at dimensions between approximately 1 nanometer to 100 nanometer where unique phenomena enable novel nanotechnology applications encompassing nanoscale science engineering and technology nanotechnology involves imaging measuring modeling and manipulating matter at this length scale or i can say in other words nanotechnology mainly consists of the processing of separation consolidation and deformation of materials by one atom or one molecule after more than 20 years of basic nano science research and more than 15 years of focused r&d under the national nanotechnology initiative applications of nanotechnology are delivering in both expected and unexpected ways how nanotechnology is promise to benefit society nanotechnology is helping to considerably improve even revolutionize many technology and industry sectors information technology homeland security medicine transportation energy food safety and environmental science among many others this webinar is for personal development help students to gain and understanding the life changing skills and it will focus uh, primarily on important aspects such as goal setting leadership development improved confidence effective communication and life coaching through this webinar participants will be able to identify their vulnerable places that include improvements as well as the usual changes needed in their lifestyles i ensure the webinar will be profitable and the next few hours will be enjoyable and fruitful for every one of you thank you very much thank you again thank you sir for your inspiring and kind words uh, here comes the most awaited moment uh, it's my pleasure to introduce dr rupesh devan sir now dr rupesh devan uh, is uh, an associate professor since 2018 uh, he is working in the department of metallurgy and engineering and material sciences at iit indore he has joined iit indore as assistant professor in 2017 he post graduated in the subject of physics more specifically in material science and also received a phd from material science from shivaji university kolhapur i guess it is in 2007 Uh, he received a fellowship uh, from ministry of science and technology which is abbreviated as most most from taiwan and joined as postdoc fellow at national fonghua university taiwan after availing the inspiring faculty award in 2014 from dst india he joined university of pune for two years that is in 2014 and in 2016 he moved to central university of punjab as and work uh, as and started working there as, as associate professor 
he is a editor of uh, chinese journal of physics uh, which is one of the uh, famous uh, journals from elsewhere publications we can say and he also worked as a guest editor for special issue in journal of nanomaterials and materials today which is also a publication by elsewhere publication his research interests are nano hetero architectures and core shell nano structures for energy generation and storage he also works on photo active materials uh, so this is just a brief, brief introduction about uh, dr rupesh devan sir he has total of 101 publication to his credit Uh, and one uh, international book and two book chapters with more than 4500 citation with a h index of 39 this is a very uh, uh, good achievement uh, and uh, yeah uh, it's a very fantastic achievement in the field of research so with this br brief introduction may i now invite uh, dr rupesh devan sir to deliver his talk on nanotechnology a blessing or curse for the development participants are requested to type their questions in the chat box thank you uh, sir rupesh devan sir yeah over to you yeah thank you thank you very much uh, datta uh, you have given a lot introduction about me uh, the most important thing is uh, the time friend of him so that introduction was more than sufficient Yes. and Thank i you, have sir. heard about uh, sangmishar college since my master because a few of my friends uh, have studied their bachelor degree uh, uh, you might be knowing they are now working either in pune or it's one of you uh, is there in front of us so thank you very much for giving me a chance to in, uh, interact with you guys uh, although it is a online platform it's always better that we can sit at our home or workplace and then have interaction so today's topic is nanotechnology a blessing or curse for the development so most of time you might have heard about nanotechnology is doing much better for a variety of applications and then you are thinking about okay what will be the future because one side we are talking about reaching on the mars we we have crossed the moon and we are talking about the mars so we are taking small objects and we are controlling everything in terms of sensors or uh, artificial intelligence on the mars at the same time we are suffering here for the water you can think about summer where we really need a water and then many things comes out then we start start talking on new channel and newspaper we start reading up across them and then somewhere we think that maybe sometime nanotechnology will help so of course that going to help but at the same time it has the other side because you since childhood we are listening or we are seeing that each coin has two sides one is work pool and one is other side so nanotechnology also has uh, two sides so before i start exactly on nanotechnology let's have some fun so that you will understand how exactly this nanotechnology is so the most important thing here is one question you have to ask yourself that can this small object handle the pressure so we have wrestlers across us so many solapur guys used to visit kolapur for wrestling and they use their they built up themselves but those wrestlers are bit small whatever you are seeing on the screen so these are called uh, sumo wrestlers from J uh, japan and they are having size approximately close to 200 kg so let's imagine these two guys are micro particles and then they are fighting with each other so they can uh, sustain with uh, each other but what if we put a small object with these uh, bigger size particles so let's imagine this up bigger guy is a micro particle and this small kid is nano particle so you just can think if suppose you ask them to fight with each other then do you think that this small particle can fight with this bigger one so small wrestler can fight with the bigger one the answer is of course not it's impossible but we are making mistake here that we are comparing two different morphologies together just imagine in terms of weight or in terms of size if suppose this is 200 kg and this small kid is 20 kg then just imagine if you want to balance them then how many kids will there across this guy and then if you match the size then definitely this small kids have much better idea much better power compared to one because he will be surrounded by others right so now idea comes in mind that okay if we put these two particles together micro and small nano particle together that time maybe they will handle the pressure then what comes next is a 
affordability and convenience. We should thanks Tata Motors that they have invented a small car which can walk around the traffic. Even if you go to a crowded city, now Solapur might be one of the crowded city in the Maharashtra. But you think about Pune and uh, Bombay where space crunch is already there and you have number of vehicles walking on the road. So how to move on with that road? So because of that, Tata give an affordable car with very less price, which can walk on the road for poor people. So considering this whole scenario, he gave name as a uh, Nano. But when you are comparing with these two, that you have giant car, which can walk on any size of the road or any mountain road. And then you can uh, go with a very high speed. Of course, Nano cannot give that much better speed, but you can think of, if you match these two cars together and then you think about their horsepower, so they are no more comparative because horsepower for Tata is less comparatively and for this big vehicle is comparatively higher. But suppose you want to match these two together and then the number of nano cars will be together to match the horsepower. So you just think about this bigger car is carrying out around eight persons and uh, having capacity, let's consider in CC 2500 and this Tata car is hardly around 800. So it will be multiple three times. So more persons can be carried. But when it comes to the two th things together, just you can see these two girls are laughing at the man who is sitting in this giant car. They might be thinking about you are taking this big car. We are reaching to the same destination, but how you are going to solve the parking problem. And our car looks cute and price is also a very, very less. So those things we have to compare when we are talking about two different materials that micro and none. And the best example is just open your cell phone, you will find three different uh, SIM cards. Earlier, this was called as a standard SIM card where microchip was there and holding chip. Then considering the component to accommodate on one particular size and give better applications to the uh, users, the Samsung has removed this blue part, which was holding material, and then they have introduced only a small size card, which is called as a micro SIM. And then iPad, or you can say Apple phones, Apple company went ahead a little bit out of that, and then they removed complete holding material, and they just inserted a SIM card in that. It's called, they call it as a nano SIM. Of course, that is not nano because you can see it through your eyes, and if you put your scale on that, it approximately 0.5 or one centimeter, right? But how the exactly nano is, so we have to understand for that purpose, the scale of the things. So you know watermelon, everyone is fond of that because someone is uh, approaching very closer. So everyone will like to have it. So if you look at the diameter, the diameter of this watermelon used to close for 10 centimeter length, forget about it. Nowadays, watermelon is even bigger. So this, suppose you consider in centimeter, then you might be remembering that there was one coin which is of metallic and this was 10 paisa, even five paisa. It's very small. It's approximately a one centimeter. Nowadays, you can see a five rupees coin. You used to call five rupees dollar. Of course, we don't have dollar, we have five, uh, rupees. So five rupees coin, which is approximately uh, uh, one inch or you can say two to 2.5 centimeter. Smaller than that is a pen which, which you used to write. If you consider a ball pen, the small tip, if you consider the ball is approximately one millimeter. Nowadays, you can see a lead pencil where it is written that 0.5 millimeter. That is what we are talking about that size of the tip of that particular lead box or lead pen. Then you look at the hair. Your hairs are approximately 100 micro. Then we, we know that wires. Right, because since last one year we are at home and we are hearing about the COVID virus, which has started from China, moves to Europe, and then it's landed in India. And still we are suffering. We are looking to get rid of it. And that size is approximately one micron, plus or minus a little bit. So if this size goes even more smaller, then you can think about the gold nanoparticle, which is close to 10 nanometer. And here what we are going to see today. So nanometers, benching is also a nano. If you consider a single benching uh, or platform, then it's called as graphene, which is having size of 0.5 nanometer. Carbon nanotubes, even even smaller than uh, gold nanoparticles. They are having size of five nanometer in diameter. Water molecules, even smaller than that, it's having 0.1 nanometer. So if you look at this size, we are 
down uh, listening here that gold nanoparticles are in a nano size. So what is the definition for nano? What is accepted definition for nano? So there are wide variety of definitions, but what standardized is any object which is having either size less in between one to 100 nanometer should be called as a nano. But then there you have to consider the histogram and then you have to consider the size distribution. So approximately it is considered that 50% of the particles which are being placed there in uh, during your analysis should have size between one to 100 nanometer, then you can say that all these particles are, are a nanoparticles or nanostructures. So these nanostructures really going to help us in the future technology development. So the best example is your TV. So few of you might have listened or you might have seen that we were having a black and white TV, which was lying at the corner and having a big shutter across it. So if you open the shutter, you will find the TV inside. And uh, it was approximately in India before 90s. Then in during 90s, we have a uh, uh, color TV, which was introduced by only the company, right? So black and white TV converted into a color TV. And now we are talking about the flat screen. So what was lying at the corner of your hall has moved to your wall and the thickness has reduced drastically. Now just imagine or just ask question yourself, why this black box or color box, which was lying at the corner has moved on the wall? How come, what happens inside? Because earlier we were using CRT and that CRT has been replaced with the electronics and then we have now LED displays. And that means we will start reducing the size, increasing the color contrast, and then uh, we think about the quality. So in around 2010, the quality comes in picture. So earlier we were having display only with the TV, right? Then it moves to the computer. So computer, what was happening there? The same CRT was used and there you can display whatever was done in a CPU. So we were having display only with computer and the TV. But after that, what happened? What revolution takes place? And because of that, we could see the mobile phones. Earlier mobile, Nokia mobile was there, which was having only a dial color, dialing things, nothing else was there. And then Samsung, Apple, and many other companies jump in. HTC was one, one of the uh, pioneer company who introduced the color display and where you can play the games, then started video calling and many things. That means the TV, which was lying on your wall has moved in your pocket or in your bags in form of iPad, or you can say in form of pad or in form of uh, cell phone. So small size, has been introduced there. So if you compare this bigger TV and with your phone, then you can really say, okay, size is reducing, but why? What happening at the back end? And now we are talking about the flexible display. Why? Because we want to carry our display across uh, any, anywhere we are talk, uh, walking. So suppose you are going on a beach, you can open your TV, uh, which was in coded manner in your bag, and then you can place there and you can watch uh, your serial or your movie. So same thing can happen during your traveling. And now we are talking about the power reduction and we are thinking about the interactivity. That means this foldable or this flexible display, which is being placed in our pocket should have a power capability of at least eight hours. So we not need to worry about the recharging it again and again. So that means really small things are taking uh, charge of all bigger things. So that is the best example that we are using a nanotechnology for a betterment of the society, betterment of our life, right? But is it the thing only? Of course not. The computer is one more. So you can see the first computer which was introduced to the world was occupying approximately a 20 by 20 feet area. You can see this man is sitting inside the computer and he's changing the tube which was used to control the temperature of this computer. And now we are having laptop where you are watching me either on cell phone or on the laptop. Right. So laptop is very small. Earlier laptop was bigger. It used to weight approximately 5 kg. And now we are talking about even 1 kg, less than 1 kg. So we call it as an air pad or uh, air map, something like that. So why it is happening? Because the component which has fixed inside this big computer has been replaced with a small component. So you can see here the ICs which are being used for the computer are increasing day by day, but reducing in size. The Moore has introduced his own identification, uh, or you can say its own law, which is giving a trained line here. 
what he stated is in one micrometer square area or one centimeter square area, the number of ICs will double every year. And that's what's happening. So till 2017, it happens to be double. But now we have decided to control it. Earlier, the transistor, first transistor, which was introduced by having size of one centimeter. And now we are talking about in nano, one nano or five nanometer in between the range. But is this things we are inventing ourselves? The answer is no, we are learning it from the science, uh, learning it from the nature. So the scientists are always trying to attain the wonder of science through the nature. So the list is too long, but I will start with the sticky fit, which is always there in your house. What is it called is laser. You can walk around a rough surface anywhere and you can run even faster. How come? Because if you are asked to walk on a surface which is hardly a 14 or less imagine a 45 degree angle you will feel a tired but this lizard is walking on the roof and never fall down very rarely it will fall down right why it is happening because it is having a drain rigs which can suck down the vacuum type kind of things and it can hold the wall so we are trying to mimic that even you have seen in uh, movies if you go to mi mission impossible there you can see this actor is walking under uh, buildings with the help of some object, which is nothing but a magnetic object, or sometimes it's a, it can create a vacuum. The next best example is a spider. This is again available at your home, right? So small, tiny fiber, which can eject the, or it can give, a, it's a saliva in a polymer format and can create a very big nest, which even small, insect cannot break. So it is very good having very good strength. It is very long and very lightweight. So just imagine if you can create such a thread in your life, it will be a very lightweight and very strong, right? So same thing we are trying to mimic. The next best example is the self-cleaning uh, reflecting butterflies. Since childhood, we are fond of running behind the butterflies to catch it. And when we, 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 you hold it in your hand, it will leave the color uh, prints in your hand, right? So that means these small tiny particles are helping this butterfly not to get dirty. Even since childhood, you would have not seen that butterfly gets dirty or loses its color. So just imagine if you can create such, such surface where you cannot uh, even consider of having dust. So it will be a self cleaning and self reflecting science are trying to mimic this technology as well. Optical nanoscience, you might have heard, right? So you can see this insect. I am in love with this insect because it is having a lot of colors. You just name the color, definitely you can find it. Even you can see black, blue, red, orange, green, and all others. So how come this creature is creating such kind of colors? So what kind of chemistry is behind this that you, people are trying to understand. And then similarly, you can implement in your day-to-day -day activities. The water collecting battle box is another example, which lives in a desert. You know, desert collecting water is very tough job, but this guy can create its own uh, water because what happened here, this is having a sliding surface where water droplets will form and these droplets move along this body and it will go to the neck and these water battle bags can drink this water and can live there. So just imagine what if we can create a such kind of structure in desert area to collect the water. A real life Funsu Kwangalu has created a tunnel or you can say a tower of ice in open environment, right? So similar technology, we are trying to uh, use it. When you can see the Takun beaks, right? We call it sometimes in uh, India hornbill. If you look at the size of this beak and the bird, it's approximately same. How come this small bird is handling this much bigger size beak? So that means something is unnatural, or you can say something is extraordinary with this beak. This beak is even hard, but it is highly porous, right? So this bird can carry this beak anywhere. So just imagine if you can create such structure, which is very hard, very lightweight, you can use that in an aer aeroplane. And then you can just imagine aeroplane can be more lighter, more sturdy, and then you will require very less fuel. So fuel efficiency will increase. This list can go on increasing. But as I said, this we are trying to mimic the nanosense. But what about our ancestors? 
do they know about or did they learn anything about the nanotechnology of course yes nanotechnology is not new it's quite old because our ancients people were knowing how to stain the glasses if you walk around uh, old places you can find the stained glasses having very beautiful colors and these all these glasses were prepared with finely grounded particles of gold and silver and they know the chemistry of this gold and silver nanoparticles what should be the size and how to place them so that they can give us a different colors and unfortunately we don't have written record of this particular technology and that's why scientists are trying to understand how these gold particles are uh, tailoring this photonics right so just imagine if this would have been in written record then we would, would have used this technology in future and we would have uh, moved to a next nice level right so nanotechnology is not new it's a quite old technology but people at that time were not knowing what should we call it as whether it is nanotechnology or it's a nano or a micro so this idea was given by a great scientist or you can say a professor richard finman in his talk in american physical society in 1959 he just introduced some concept and then he mentioned that there is a plenty of room at the bottom that means if you start reducing the size of the material definitely you can explore more and more better physical or chemical properties but how to understand that because that time electro uh, optical microscope were not that strong because that optical microscope having limitations because you have to consider the wavelength of the light and accordingly you can find out the particle under optical microscope so he introduced the electron microscope concept he just mentioned there is there no way to make electron microscope more powerful because electron was the only to give a better idea of the nanotechnology or nano structure because there you can control their wavelength and then you can identify easily this how the structure looks like and after that people start talking about the electron microscope and fortunately very soon up this lecture the professor charles otley and his team at cambridge university start inventing uh, scm the first scm was introduced in 1965 as a commercial stereocon uh, prepared by cambridge science, science instrumentation company after that or uh, during that time even tm was introduced and this tm and scm was used to identify the structure at nano even in micron level and nano level so you can see here the fsa microgop which shows the micro uh, nano dots or nano eyes and this tm image gives you an idea how the structure looks like from outside it looks like a hexagonal structure but if you look at inside then you can really find out these are nano walls building up the structure hollow structure so this nano technology get more famous after this things and then we are talking about the nanotechnology nowadays but you should understand the basic advancement in science and technology comes strides in each every century and which create some massive wealth it started with textile earlier then railroad automobile and now in india we are talking about computer even you can say automobile and computer is connected together automobile was reached to the super saturation state or you can say the wide adoption aim of the rapid growth happened but because of the computer and automobile connected together we are now talking about the manless or driverless car even we are talking about how to avoid the accident so that we can close uh, uh, we can avoid the accident and so that we can control the traffic on the road so computer technology has been used and then we are talking uh, that how about the next generation of the computer the computer has reached to its uh, uh, widespread adoption and we have about to the rapid uh, end of the rapid growth nowadays we are talking about improving the speed recently china has introduced that they are going to build up supercomputer which can perform the calculations even sturdy calculations or difficult calculations in fraction of second but this is going to be uh, end very soon and fortunately we are now at the era of nanotechnology this nanotechnology term coined uh, recently and after that the discovery of carbon nanotubes triggered a lot of excitement and people start doing research or scientists start doing research in nanotechnology so we were at the introductory stage and uh, even i can say that till today we are at the introductory stage of course partially we are using this nanotechnology for day to day activities and will start adopting it till end of this century and after that we may reach to the end of the rapid growth so 
young generation is really going to enjoy this nanotechnology for the betterment of society. But what is the next? Because we have seen the end of computer era, we have seen end of the automobile, and we are thinking about the nanotechnology, but what is the next? So just imagine if this computer and nanotechnology being connected together, then we have so-called in artificial intelligence. So maybe artificial intelligence come in picture. Right? So nanotechnology can reach the gap bridge the gap between these two things. So computer and nanotechnology is going to help us in future. So what are these nanostructure morphologies? You can see different nanostructure morphologies are there. It looks like a root shoot structure. It looks like a wire, one side comb, two side combs, which are really you are using in your day-to-day -day life. Even hooks you can see here, the belts, right? This barcode structure and even helix. You might have heard about DNA, right? DNA helix, but these, Helix are being prepared with the material. Even nanotubes are there. Nano bullets are also there. Just you can imagine you have a bullet, and if you hit someone, the man will die. But what if you create such nano bullets? What you can do in your body, right? So even there are uh, two dimensional structures, one dimensional structures. So there are different types. Even plates are there. You have seen the corn, right? The the corn used to be there, but the scientists have really created corns. Right, so you can see a sweet corn which has been there with small bits on the top of it. So there are many varieties of nanostructures, but these nanostructures or this nanotechnology is always asking for the betterment of society or always asking for the different applications. So what are the top 10 nanotechnologies which are used for the development of the world or development of the society, or you can say betterment of society. The first one is energy storage, production and conversion. The second one is agriculture. Then we are talking about here water treatment, right? So drinkable water is the need or is must for each and everyone. So the nanotechnology is being used for water treatment or water remediation. The COVID has let us understand that we should use nanotechnology for disease diagnosis and screening or drug delivery. So there are many, even air pollution. If you look towards Delhi, then you will understand how severe the air pollution is. So we have to think about air pollution remediation. Even nanotechnology is used in construction, pest control management and health monitoring. So there are different applications. So let's see how this nanotechnology is going to place us in different applications. So transportation is one of the best example, right? Everyone is having either car or motorcycle. Right. So you can see here, this car is everywhere used with nanotechnology. You can see the nanomaterial being used here in terms of battery, so that you can replace uh, this complete fuel. You, when you are uh, driving your car in a rainy season, then it is difficult to wipe up the water. So you can have self-cleaning the pins on the top of glass. Even you can have heat seals so that you cannot feel heat inside your car. You can have even nano additives in a fuel so that your efficiency will increase. You can have nano lubricants. You can see uh, even in, uh, we, we are a country with the farmers. So you can see the bullock cart, which was walking on the road is having a wheel and there you have to put lubricant. And that was just oil. But nowadays people are talking about putting nanoparticles in that lubricant so that the lubrication will be very much better. And in car it started using. So there are many other applications, even sensors are being used. Right? So in transportation, these kind of nanotechnologies or nanomaterials have been used so that you can have a driverless car without accident. The next one is, again, we are replacing this fuel. You can see the petrol price has increased a few years back, or you can say the four years before, the petrol price was approximately 65 rupees, and now it is close to make a century. So of course we Indians like a cricket. So we always ask Tendulkar or other players to make a century, but just imagine if this player uh, fuel make a century, how the life will be everywhere. The cost will increase because transportation is getting much expensive. So definitely food price will increase. So scientists start thinking about what is the replacement for fuel because fuel is going to die one time. It's going to be exhausted. So we have to think about the proper replacement. So scientists decided we will have better replacement with the battery. So there is a, a perfect combination or perfect competition between a fuel and battery. So what if we use battery? So nowadays a car is there with either fuel cell which is using hydrogen or you have a battery material. So battery, if you use then we can even increase the 
traveling time. Nowadays in India, we have a car which can travel approximate distance of 400, 500 kilometer in one single charge. So what if we increase the efficiency? So to increase that efficiency, we should consider the nanomaterials in the battery. So we can see here the example of the battery. You can see the truck and if you go around our tractor, you can see the big lead acid battery is there, which is having very less efficiency. And we are talking about the taking car to more than 500 kilometers. That means we have to consider the battery, which is being very small, lightweight, and even having very good efficiency. That means very good energy or power density. So to make such a battery, we have to consider a very small size material. So you can see here Duracell battery, or even you can see a capacitor, supercapacitor, and even you can see the cell phone. Just imagine that earlier cell phone, which was invented by Nokia, the model number might be 1121 or 2211, something like that, and having a very big battery, which can sustain around for three hours. But nowadays you have a smartphone, which where you are using computer, uh, sorry, uh, internet every time you're calling, you're talking with your friends, you are using social media and many more things. And even that battery can last for four hours. Even Apple, which is giving battery with eight hours. How come? What happens behind? Most important thing is they have tailored the material and that's why their properties are being tailored. They are using nanometers inside the battery. So their efficiency have been increased. So definitely these nanometers are going to run the vehicles in future. So energy storage and conversion will have a better in future with this nanotechnology. Even uh, you can see about the hot summer. Solapur is one of the best example in front of you because you are staying there. The summer used to be hotter. I have uh, one of friend who introduced me in one sentence in a solar, uh, about the Solapur that we have only two seasons. One is summer and another is hot summer. So I can imagine how the Solapur is. So just imagine how long you can use AC over there. AC is again an expensive because you have to consume a power, you have to pay for the electricity, right? So everyone cannot afford it. What if you prepare a window which is having a smart window and which can resist the heat, right? As well as it can give you an option that whenever you require, you can make it clear so that sunlight can come in. That means even you are in a rainy season or in, you are using it in a summer season, both ways it can use, it can work, right? So these smart windows are being introduced. What happens here, you can apply a very small voltage and this film is made up of nanometers. So with this small voltage, they can change the color. You can see the real example over here. You can see this person applying a small voltage and it become opaque completely. Even you can see here, these are being fixed in a window and whenever you require, you just apply voltage, they can change the color. So they can resist the heat. So such windows, suppose you fix in your home with very less price, then definitely you will have a better life. You not need to worry about the expensive air conditioners, right? So what happens here? Earlier it was in a thin film format and now they are being prepared in a one dimensional structure, so nanoparticles. So they are being exposed to the electrolyte and this electrolyte is helping us to change the color. Similar way, there are anti-reflecting or uh, displays made of a perfect black carbon. So you can see here, this perfect black carbon thin film is prepared with where these nanowires are being placed. And these are even in a thread format. What is the use of this? So they are being coated on silicon substrate. You can see here, this carbon nanotubes uh, or carbon material being coated. And then you cannot see here, this is under microscope, but if you go with visible light, it looks completely black because it's a complete black carbon material. But when you expose and uh, when you expose, then you can identify what is there. So where exactly this marking is made for that purpose, you have just expected mark. And then you put a particular light of particular wavelength, then you can see what is the exactly logo is there. Nowadays, for security purpose, hologram is placed on your certificates. Even you can see your mark list, your certificate 10, 12th, or whatever certificates, you can find hologram there which, with which the university or the institute can identify, okay, this belongs to us. But what if we have such kind of structure which is visible only in particular wavelength? And these kind of structures are being used in DRDO purpose. That means depends purpose. So that you can have this kind of logo on your weapons, no one can identify what kind of logo is there and you have designed your own wavelength where it will be visible. So the security has become much better with these nanostructures.
even census you can see if you have walk around you can see a lot of sensors are there even nowadays you can see the car which is invented by uh, toyota yaris it is having even front side sensors if you walk close to it it will start buzzing up so these sensors not need to be a very big in size even nowadays single nano wires are been used so gas sensors are most important you might have heard about bhopal tragedy where gas leakage cause a uh, life cost the life of many people because that time we didn't have gas sensors so suppose you have a such kind of nano gas sensors placed everywhere definitely you can detect where gas is leaking even in your home you are using lpg gases and many times you heard or many times you 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 used to read in a newspaper that the gas blasted so suppose you have such kind of sensor placed near to your gas can or gas tank then you can easily identify how or where the gas is leaking so these nano devices are going to make your life better the protection against the oxidation and corrosion is the biggest challenge because we have a land very less uh, but water is very more so just imagine if you want to go or you you want to use the transport the water is to be considered most cheapest way but you have to consider the biggest sleep and this water is a salty so this salty water cause very good corrosion of this a big sip and the question comes here how to avoid that so people are trying to understand that how to avoid the corrosion by using nanoparticles so what is been done these nanoparticles are been mixed in a color in a paint and they are coated in very thin layer so that these this thin film consists of a very thin layer of the color with the nanoparticles so that it will resist the corrosion so that is called as a protection against the corrosion using the nanoparticles the field emitter displays whatever displays you are using maybe lcd or crystal displays but there are field emission displays where nano structures have been created sony has introduced the field emission display which is having very high pixel size compared to any other display invented so far but yet it has not been introduced in the market because of the cost reduction they are trying to reduce the cost so even people are thinking about creating lamp with the field emission nano electronics right i have mentioned that black box tv which was lying in the corner has moved on your uh, wall flat wall why because we have introduced the pcb printer circuit boards what is it so simple line you can draw on a board and then that will act as a wire right and there you can control the diodes and other characteristics that means component you can place so size is ready to see so you can see here this printer circuit board is having a wire here you can place your component then electron can move around so suppose you want to put your real wire which is being used conventionally then you definitely cannot fix large number of component in a small size so really we are using nanotechnology for a better made integrated circuit because as i mentioned that computers are getting more and more uh faster so you just can think about the integrated circuit over here so you can see this flat wire uh, this flat screen where you can see here the photograph have number of wires and these wires in fact if you go more deeper you can find these are small bits where you have a uh, gate drain and source kind of things so where you can control your the circuitry nano generators is one of the best example for this uh, nano technology development because you know when summer start we will go uh, in a reduced water reservoirs and then these water reservoirs are not sufficient even to feed the needs of society for the drinkable water for the animals or for human beings then how come we can generate the electricity so what if you use such nano structures we can generate the electricity you can see this microchip which is very small in size been uh, is having a nano structure so you can see here another model where you have fiber around with this nano structure is generated and these nano structures are been placed in a short format so you can see here nano wires in nano wires and suppose you apply a pressure on it so stress strain definition comes in picture so stress strain will lead to change the scenario you can see these nano generators are fixed in a sole of the shoes and when this guy start walking automatically electricity generates and that can lead the light china is far ahead in this technology actually this technology was invented in georgia tech institute by professor zhil wang which is here right who is here and uh china has asked him to start one particular institute 
where they are generating these nano generators and they're fixing in a big truck's tire. So when truck starts moving, this tire will apply pressure on these nano generators and these nano generators are creating an electricity and that has been used in a trucks for the LED lights and many more. So definitely, again, this gives an evidences that nanotechnology is blessing us. Memory devices is another example. You can see the first computer when it was developed, that time the hard disk was of 5 UMB. You can see in 1956, very big size. But nowadays we are having a size of terabytes. When we are talking about four terabytes, 10 terabytes, and that can hold in your pocket. How come? Because if you break and see inside, they are having this, and these disks are made up of nanoparticles. So we are earlier using a bigger micro size particles, and there we are going through longitudinal or perpendicular recording mode. But here, these particles are converted into a small size in nanoparticles. So you can see here, size of one single particle is 20 nanometer. These are so uniformly devised so that you can control the memory. So memory is really getting a better and better with smaller size. So not only that small size particles are helping us in our memory devices, but there is one best example called as a boy and his atom. You can see this is a boy and he's having his own atom. And these atoms are created with the scanning tunneling microscope or STM, where single atoms have been placed. And this boy is playing with his own atom. Even he created this atom platform and he starts jumping on it. So these atoms, these, these are a car, uh, the carbon monoxide atoms and these atoms were controlled through the electric field. So the day will not be far away where we will be watching an atom movie on a screen in a theater, right? So just imagine if this boy can control his own atom and we start controlling those all atoms, then we can have a gear. We know, we know that each and every vehicle is having a gear, which is the most important component without which your vehicle cannot move. But what if you start preparing a nano gears with the atom? You can say the atom, atom gears. And these gears are really going to help us in a meeting. And suppose such atoms you place, then whatever we are seeing in Avengers movie that these Avengers are uh, helping uh, the common person to be a better uh, uh, or to get a better life. So this will come in real life. So suppose this atom, atom gears, if you start preparing, then definitely we can place the nano robots in a capsule. We can put this in a body and then inside the body, this capsule can be open and this nano robot will go deep inside wherever you are having your RTD blocks or anything that can repair. So this is the, this, this technology is going to be a feature technology. And this, this again, say, we can say that really nanotechnology is blessing us. Not only that, there are different consumer applications. You can see the sunglasses. Even you can see the notes which are being hydroscopic. Even you can see the paint. Many of us used to apply uh, ointment or you can say the fair and lovely or many other ointments on the face because everyone wants looks to be a beautiful or to be a handsome. So earlier these materials uh, or these kind of face were not having nanotech nanometers, but now these are being invented with the nanometers. Even toothpaste, they are also having nanoparticles or nanometers, right? Even on a dress, people are using uh, nanometers. So if suppose these nanometers have been placed on a glass, right? you, you can see nowadays in the metro cities, there are many glass buildings, which eventually get dirty with the time. So how to clean that? It's a very dangerous work. No one wants to uh, put life in a danger. But suppose you go with these conventional uh, glasses, then you can identify these glasses. You can identify these glasses uh, when water is poured, then you can find out this water will always lie on the stop. And it is defi definitely difficult to clean up. But what if we put self-cleaning windows on this? So these self-cleaning windows will not lay water on this top of it. So you can see here, this real life application. If you have a normal glass and if you tar, uh, try to wipe out, it's fairly difficult. But suppose you have self-cleaning or glass treated with the nanomaterials, then you can clean up the glasses. And this is the best example over here. So these nanomaterials are creating a hydrophobic surface so that water will not lie on this, dust particles will not lie on this. And one Japanese professor has painted his whole house with titanium nanoparticles so that no dust will be lying on his wall. You can see even here, and another example, 
these nanoparticles have been sprayed on a brick, right, which is porous, and this guy is pouring uh, paint on it. So it is cleaning up. Even you can see this uh, maple syrup, which is highly sticky, and one glass is coated with nanoparticles inside. You can see this is cleaning completely, even on shoes and, and cloth. So these nanoparticles can let you make a very clean surface. So that means what I had earlier introduced this butterfly self cleaning technology is really coming in picture. But there is a greatest ethical challenge of our time. One side we are thinking that nanotechnology can be used for the betterment of society. But when you compare the life expectancy in uh, USA or in North America, it is approximately 80 years. But what about South Africa? It is just a 40 years. So now the question comes here, the nanotechnology is really helping us for the betterment of society or it's helping us for, uh, partially. So with this question, if you come, then we can say, yes, we have a quantum dot being used in a medicine for the better expectancy of the life. But at the same time, we have a COVID right in, in front of us. Fortunately, we have now a vaccine in hand, but not for everyone. So you just can imagine these things are let us understand we have to use nanotechnology for the betterment or for the real good cause. But just think if all these uh, whatever applications are introduced being done by the nanotechnology or nanomaterials, what we will do? Yes, suppose nanorobots come in picture. These nanorobots will help the person to build up the company. Then most of us will lose the job. Even this time, you can see because of COVID, many people have lose, lost the job. But what if? But this is time being because we know that once COVID goes out, then we will have our own employment or we can generate the employment. Government is, uh, might be uh, confident about this. Even many companies are confident that we can generate the employment. But what if we start using this nanotechnology in your day to day uh, life? Then definitely many of the guys will remain unemployed and that will have very bad side effects. So this is the curse of the nanotechnology. We are generating many other better applications. And at the same time, we are applying the throw away society. That means whatever materials we are generating, we are throwing it. That, that means our earth is our own dumping yard. We don't have other planet where we can dump all these waste products. So definitely we are creating a nano pollutions. And this is the best example. Right in Delhi, you can see staying there is a very tough job. So this is causing uh, health issues, global warming we are talking about. So this nanotechnology can be a solution, but at the same time, if we not control it, can be a worst. You will be under always under surveillance. So just imagine if single small nano robot can go in your body and can cure your disease, the same thing can happen with you in terms of surveillance, because anyone can fix a camera anywhere and sit in a room and can watch. So whether you are walking in a tunnel or you are walking on a road or you are in at your home, it doesn't matter. So these nano cameras can always watch you. You want just imagine such kind of nano robots placed in your body unknowingly, then you will lack, uh, lose your privacy. So lack of privacy will be there. Even the technology is not far ahead or far away that person will start reading your brain using this nanotechnology. Even nano weapons is another way that you can you just know that Hiroshima and Nagasaki, what happened when big atom bomb was placed there. But what if such small weapons goes in the hand of wrong persons? Because these weapons are easy to build, very small in size and hard to monitor because it's a nano format. So other persons cannot monitor, only the developer can monitor easy to deliver and absolute almost immediately and very easy uh, to control through the programs. So these nano weapons going to a big challenge for the society and that will lead to the terrorism. And we are the worst victim of the terrorism, right? So you have seen the Bombay attack. So what will happen such when nano weapons goes in the hand of these terrorists, they can make life a more dangerous. So arm race will start. So such kind of nanotechnology, suppose start used by each and every country, then arm race will start. So of course we are, as Indian have agents, even almost all country have, it, have its own agent, but is this the solution? Of course not, because this will lead to the war. 
when we are thinking about use nanotechnology and create avengers for ourselves to support ourselves but these avengers how long are going to help us because everywhere we are using nanotechnology then definitely we are going to face the war and it will cost a life so we need a solution and that's we need right now what are the solutions actually there is no easy answer because yet we have not started using this nanotechnology because we are trying to adopt it we are at the introductory phase so we have to start thinking about the control over the nanofactory that means either we have to control the production but suppose we control the production cost will go higher so suppose we control the cost and production then we have to think about the handling person so it should not go in a wrong hands so there are many other factors affecting so we should have a global administrative network but unfortunately each and every country wants to be in a power wants to rule the world so it's very hard to have a global administration because the competition has developed between the many countries so the risk of the competition is still there with this nanotechnology so we should have a single international crash program but yet we don't have because we don't have global administration so the only thing is that we have to avoid arms race and we have to work for the betterment of society using this nanotechnology so with concluding remark i can say that nanotechnology is really good for the society that means it's really blessing for the society but if we start using it in adverse way or in different way then it will be a curse for the society that means in short nanotechnology is a blessing as well as it is a curse for the development thank you thank you very much uh, dr rupesh devan sir uh, for such a informative and excellent talk uh, i am getting too many messages uh, on youtube uh, live streaming that thank you sir for arranging such a nice lecture and uh, we are now aware about uh, nanotechnology and uh, yeah i really want to thank you uh, for giving such a nice lecture and uh, yeah any question the students can ask directly or uh, type uh, type your message in chat box so that dr rupesh sir will answer your question thank you sir any questions students mamani sir is see the chat box yes and sir. then ask the questions questions in the chat box i think no, sir there is no question in the chat box yes somebody is asking in the chat you see the chat box sir i i only i only type the message in the chat box so anyway you ask that question also no problem at all because only one question i have seen in the chat box no, sir i I'm not able to see the question. It is regarding feedback form. Okay, no problem. Okay, but I will check. Yeah. Sir, it was such an informative talk that uh, students are uh, really enjoyed. I think so. Now it is uh, my pleasure to invite our vice principal, Dr. Mr. Gote sir, to deliver the presidential address. Gote sir, over to you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. a respected honorable principal dr mr mr rajman madam today's resource person for the webinar dr devan sir a respected head of the department dr manle sir and organizing committee dr mamane sir and all colleagues of the chemistry departments and colleagues of my college on the half of president of this webinar principal of sangmeshwar college i thank to the dr devan sir given a lecture from start of the nanotechnology and applications merits and demerits of the of this nanotechnology actually according to my view whatever one hour i have heard all this webinar this webinar must be conducted by the electronics department because more than 3/4 is belongs to the electronics 
maybe dr desa is here he may heard this word so actually it must be conduct by the electronics anyway he given very nice lecture nice information whatever the new technology is going in the world so this is definitely useful to the everyone for the especially the new faculty members and the students sir once again on behalf of sri sangmeshwar education society and the principal of sangmeshwar college thank you thank you all uh, thank you very much sir for your inspiring and kind words may i now invite uh, mr uh, sd sheikh sir uh, to deliver a word of thanks so good afternoon to everybody so i can speak also in english but today i speak in marathi why samitrano vidnyan he antaralat dhun jata sarv matra bhasha he antakaran dhun jata म्हणून मी वॉट्स ऑफ थँक मला सरसाना मराठी दिन मानतोय तर कमळावर ज्ञानेश्वर महाराजांनी एका ठिकाणी सांगितलंय की कमळावरती ब्रह्म पाय ठेवी हळूवार कुचंबी केशर या शंका मित्रांनो याचा अर्थ असा आहे की कमळ त्या ब्रह्मराज इतकं कमळाची काळजी घेतो तसं आमच्या संस्थेचे ऑनरेबल सेक्रेटरी धर्मराज काळीज साहेब कॉलेजच्या प्राचार्य डॉक्टर राजमान्य मॅडम आत्ताच बघितलं तुम्ही की चार्टॉक्स मध्ये काय प्रश्न आहेत का म्हणून एवढं बारीक निरीक्षण करणारे आपले आवडते प्राचार्य एस डी गोटे सर यांनी आपल्या कार्यक्रमाला उपस्थित दाखवली त्याबद्दल मी डिपार्टमेंट तर्फे त्यांचे आभार मानतो नंतर आपल्या ऑर्गनायझिंग कमिटीचे डॉक्टर मंडले सर हेड ऑफ द केमिस्ट डिपार्टमेंट आणि आमचे सहकारी मित्र डॉक्टर ममाने सर या दोघांनी बहुमूल्य असं कष्ट घेतलं आणि आपल्या समोर हा प्रोग्राम किंवा हा कार्यक्रम आयोजित केला त्याबद्दल त्यांचे आभार मानतो महत्वाचं म्हणजे आज जे आपल्याला गेस्ट भेटले ते डॉक्टर ममाने सरांचे मित्र आहेत रुपेश देवल सर डॉक्टर रुपेश देवल सर तुमचं कौतुक आहे सर कारण का तुम्ही अगदीच उत्तम तऱ्हेनं व्हॉट अबाउट द नॅनो टेक्नॉलॉजी तर येणारा काळ हा ज्ञानाचाच येणार आहे मित्र सर कारण का दोन हजार पंचवीस पर्यंत सगळं जगच हे ज्ञानोमय होणार आहे कारण का आपण सायन्स अँड टेक्नॉलॉजी मध्ये टॉप टू बॉटम टू टॉप जातो परंतु ज्ञानो मध्ये आपण टॉप टू बॉटम येतो कारण का आपण साधं उदाहरण जर घेतलं की मिरची जर खाल्ली हिरवी मिरची तर ते तिखट लागत नाहीये परंतु त्याला जर का ग्राइंड केलं तर त्याचा तिकटपणा वाढतो सट्टे सिऱ्या वाढतो त्यामुळं ज्ञानो टेक्नॉलॉजी ऍडव्हान्स आहे आणि मित्रांनो तुमच्यासाठी सांगतोय की येणाऱ्या काळामध्ये पार्किंगचा प्रश्न येणार आहे त्यावेळेस तुमची ज्ञानो हे तुम्ही खिशात घेऊन येणार आहे आणि त्यामुळे हे ज्ञानो टेक्नॉलॉजी जे वर्ड आहे ते खूप ग्रेट आहे त्यामुळं रुपेश देवन सरांनी अगदीच उत्तम तऱ्हेनं आणि ओझरत असं लेक्चर दिलं त्याबद्दल परत एक वेळेस मी संस्थेच्या वतीने कॉलेजच्या प्राचार्य राजमान्य मॅडमच्या वतीने व्हाईस प्रिन्सिपल गोटे सरांच्या वतीने मोमाने सरांच्या वतीने डॉक्टर मंडले सरांच्या वतीने तसेच माझे इतर सहकारी आणि विद्यार्थी त्यांच्या वतीने मी परत एक वेळेस डॉक्टर रुपेश देवन सरांचा आभार मानतो आणि महत्वाचं म्हणजे या ठिकाणी माझे विद्यार्थी आजी माझी विद्यार्थी या ठिकाणी ऐकत असतील तर त्यांनी आम्हाला सहकार्य केलं त्याबद्दल त्यांचे आभार मानतो आणि या ठिकाणी संयोजकाच्या प्रायर परमिशनने हा कार्यक्रम इथं संपला असं मी जाहीर करतो जय हिंद जय हा सर कॉल करतो मी थँक यू हा थँक यू थँक्यू दादा छान झालं थँक्यू सर थँक्यू सर थँक्यू थँक्यू मस्त झालं सगळ्यांना खूप आवड थँक्यू ममाने सर फर्स्ट क्यू अनम्यूट एव्हरी वन स्पीकर यू एन द प्रोग्राम you can stop uh, are somebody is listening are you, are you streaming and then your student can ask questions i think that's better yes no problem at all no problem yes. नाही सर पहिल्यांदा मला झूम एंड करावं लागेल मगच स्टॉप करावं लागेल नाही तर स्टुडंट कॅन आस्क नो प्रॉब्लेम इट्स ओके कॅन आस्क इन मराठी मराठीत विचारलं तरी चालेल काय अडचण नाही तुम्ही काय विचारू शकता सर आहेत ऑनलाईन आशिष कोण आहे क्वेश्चन एक एक मिनिट सर्व एक जण बोल हा येस येस बोल आशिष सर फ्युएलच्या सेक्टर मध्ये ज्ञानोटेक्नॉलॉजी 
हॅलो सर येस येस काय काय म्हणत होतो तुम्ही कारण मला ऐकलं नाही 